your store is making zero dollars right now. One of the first things that you're probably wondering is if your brand is actually getting the right traffic. You might be curious about the steps to optimize your website for conversions. So you wanna stick around because I'm about to break down the solutions for you in this video. And to be honest, I've been doing this for a while and I've seen hundreds of stores and there's really gonna be two primary reasons why your e-commerce site may not be selling. Number one is gonna be lack of traffic and number two is missing key elements in your website design. But before we delve into the solutions, I want to tackle this common question is how can I tell if I have a traffic or if I have a conversion problem, right? Am I bringing the right people or do I do I not have the right things on my website, right? So you want to stay tuned because I'm going to uncover those two things and explain that intricate dance, right? Between getting the right traffic and actually raising your conversion rates on your website. Now let's kick off with the basics, right? Website traffic. Are people even coming to the website? That's the very first question that you need to ask. Most people tend to focus on the conversion optimization, right? Getting the right apps. But if no one is seeing your website or if you have no traffic, minimal engagement, you won't be able to sell any products. That fancy new app that you just installed for upsells is really not gonna do a whole lot if you don't have traffic coming into the website. Now here's a tactical move. I want you to go over to Google Analytics for check the visit reports. Go over here, visit reports, go to engagement, pages and screens. And obviously we have it here set up for the month of January, but you can see at a glance within this page, what actual pages are being viewed on your website, right? If you're lacking traffic, you definitely want to focus on acquiring buyer intent, right? Through things like SEO, pay-per-click, influencer marketing, affiliate programs, email marketing, and obviously social media advertising. Now, this right here, this, this small little report, right, that tells you what pages your customers are actually coming to, will kind of give you the, the beginning, right, of the story. Right now, we have about 15,000 views within the top 10 pages on this particular store for a month. So that is really good traffic coming in. I would say if, if you're under even 1,000 people coming into your website overall, then you got a sort of a traffic problem where you need to actually up the amount of people who are coming in to your store by some of those methods that I mentioned just a second ago. Now I mentioned that you want to bring people to your site who already know they want what you're selling. So now that's what we mean about buyer intent customers, right? These are customers who already may know about your brand. This is sort of like the lowest hanging fruit, right? These are not sort of cold, this is not the cold traffic that they know nothing about your brand, they know nothing about your business, right? These are people who are coming to your store and they have the intent, right, of buying. And that's that's the really hard part about traffic is that traffic comes from a lot of different areas, a lot of different places, and they could be at different stages, right, of the purchase cycle. So you what you want to really focus on when it comes to traffic is those people who are ready to buy right away. Another tool that I would recommend installing if you don't have Google Analytics 4 is having something like Microsoft Clarity, which will give you heat maps and session recordings of how your customers are actually navigating through your website, how far are they scrolling, what buttons are they actually clicking on, where are they hanging up, or where are they getting hung up on, on the website, where are they doing the, the quick backs, right? Quick backs are whenever they go to a page and they go back directly to the page that were, they were at previously in, in a split second. And that's because they're not liking what they're seeing on that particular page. The great thing about this is that this pairs up well with Google Analytics. And this gives you a fuller picture into your traffic and also more so the, the conversion side of things. I wanna mention if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure that you hit that like button and subscribe to see more. Now let's dive a little bit into the conversion side of things, right? If people are viewing your products on your store, let's say you do have those 15,000 people going to your website a month, but you're not making any purchases, then you may have a design problem along with a little bit of traffic issue. So let's take a look at traffic first. One thing that I recommend everyone having is the Google Search Console set up for your website. The Google Search Console, at a glance, is going to give you and identify keywords that are actually bringing in traffic to your product pages. And really what you want to do is optimize for, again, buyer intent keywords to ensure that your products are actually aligning with what the customer actually 
needs. So if we go to our Google Search Console here and we go to our store, we can go under performance and see search results. And then right within here, we can actually go to pages. And for you, this is like our personal website. So we don't have necessarily a product page, but maybe we can see like a blog page, for example, this one, you can click on that blog page, or for you, it's going to be that product page. And then you can click on the page and then go back to query. And then queries is actually gonna show you the exact keywords that your customers are using, right? To land on that particular product page or maybe land on that particular collection page, right? This is actually going to give you a lot, a lot of insight into a customer's mind on what they're searching for to arrive, right, to that particular collection page or product page. And this will also give you an idea of the things that you're actually ranking for, right, in terms of that particular set of keywords. So for example, this top one right here, which has had two clicks, is Instagram ads for clothing brands. So that right there gives us a good idea of what the customers are searching for in order to land on that particular blog post page. From here, what you want to do is obviously optimize these keywords. If you see that this particular phrase is almost like, it's not just a keyword, right? It's, a, it's a, almost like a full phrase. If that particular phrase is actually doing well, it has a lot of impressions, then it's time to add more of those phrases within the content of your website. The same could go for an actual product page, right? So you can enhance your product descriptions. You can also enhance your collection descriptions, right? That's one of those things where a lot of people don't tend to gravitate towards, which is the actual description, that paragraph that describes the collection that they're at. A good example, and I kind of refer to this quite often, is Pink Lily. They do a good job of having that description right within their collection pages. Let me show you an example here. If we go to their maxi dresses collection page, you'll see the title at the very top and you'll see products right away. But if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see the greatness here of SEO and keywords being added to this page, right? They have about four paragraphs worth of information and keywords here talking about maxi dresses and Pink Lily and tying everything all together right within here. So this is really more of what you need in order to, again, attract more of that organic traffic, right? People who are searching, people who are using Bing, Google, maybe Pinterest, search for things and for you to rank a little bit higher for these things, you need to pay attention to your analytics. You need to pay attention to the keywords that people are using to find your products, to find your website. Again, that's just half the battle, right? Going down the path of organic, it's going to help you bring in the right traffic is going to help you make actually make that sale right by making some of these changes but i also want to mention that the the next best thing is going to be the design elements on your e-commerce website some of these things need to be addressed and they need to guide customers right seamlessly through the whole purchase journey and that's why design matters right when a customer lands on your clothing website they need to know two things really is this the right product for me and is this the right place to buy the product? So if your website isn't answering these questions, then you're actually losing sales, right? On your homepage, on your category page, on your product pages, right? Focus on creating trust and credibility through clear headlines, sub headlines, compelling imagery, and even trust badges. We talk about trust badges on this channel a lot and they do help, you know, they help the customer. It may be more in, on a psychological level, right? Of like, okay, they do offer free shipping on orders over 50, but it helps the customer understand who you are and connect with them a little bit better. Hey, if you are interested in us building your website one day, then that's the website VIP day process where we design your Shopify store in one day. More information in the link. Now I will say product pages by far don't get a whole lot of love and that's where the actual magic happens, right? That's where the customer is actually going to make that decision of whether add to cart and go to that next step or not. So optimize, to me optimizing product pages is, is absolutely crucial. And that's where you actually reinforce, right? Why customers should buy from you and address their concerns right there from that page. Right, so absolutely crucial to have things like reviews, just showcasing just a product page right here for you. Answering the questions about sizing, that's something absolutely huge that a lot of people tend to forget about. Sizing dimensions, how long the sleeves are, right? How does it actually fit? What is the model wearing? And how does it compare to my body type? All those things you need to be able to answer within a size chart. Ideally, having it as a pop-up really close to the size selector, again, next level, right? Something that a lot of people don't tend to talk 
talk about is add to cart button being your only button here on this page, the most prominent button on this page. And again, you wanna make it clear to the customer that this page, this page right here, is where they add to cart and go to the next step, right? Having other buttons right here or having the expedited checkout, like it could be very confusing for the customer. You wanna make it a seamless process to add to cart and go to the next step. Within here, you can actually you know, express or have icons, right? That tell the customer or indicate to the customer that you do accept these other payment options, but don't have it just right here, right? You want the customer to come here to your product page and go through the process of shopping with you, right? It's not just about getting that sale right away. You may be sending mixed signals right if you are initiating checkout right within the product page right if you had I think a, a bigger type item type product let's say you know this whatever it's ten thousand dollar computer like it may make sense right I don't want to necessarily lose them I want them to go straight to checkout but when it's clothing like this you want to pair up the top or the bottom maybe get the shoes maybe they get the glasses right and encourage them to actually shop throughout the store these are all design elements that need to be in place and I'm honing in on the product page here because I, I do believe that the product page is from the most important pages on the store. Now, when it comes to questions about conversion, another big thing that customers are, are probably going to ask is how does shipping, how does returns actually work? And that's why I have, this is not necessarily a clothing store, but I think they do a really good job of addressing those things right here within their product page. As you can see, they have the free shipping for, I guess, free shipping every Monday. They have a, a new perk program and then free 30 day returns right within here is very close to the add to cart button. When you click on it, you get the information that you need, right? And that's, that's the best thing. That's the best thing that you can do for your product page is you need to be able to answer the questions that your customer is going to have right within this page and not take them anywhere else, right? After the product page, right? You got the cart page, you got a smooth checkout process. You also definitely want to include trust building elements throughout that. And really the biggest trust building element that you can do within the cart and the checkout is having delivery dates that are accurate and actually delivering right on on time for those delivery options now something that i haven't touched on too much on this video is going to be that social media marketing right you are probably going to implement some of these tactics and you're probably hungry for more strategies to actually boost your sales and the biggest thing that we haven't talked about is social media marketing and what type of plan what type of strategy you need to have in order to attract the right people get the right traffic and then convert them right afterwards so you definitely want to check out this video